Welcome to Good Morning Indiana. This Friday we are following a major traffic issue right now that is developing on the city's southeast side. This is just one mile north of Beach Grove. There was a crash right at this section here. This is I-465 southbound. Traffic delayed for several hours. I'll bring you the very latest in your traffic report in just a few moments. The other big story, of course, it is a storm team alert day. Uh, it's a hot one yet again in central Indiana. Welcome, of course, to Good Morning Indiana. I'm Rafael Sanchez. And I'm Kelsey Anderson. Our storm team is tracking the chance of storms today. Yeah, and for parts of central Indiana. So in Indianapolis, I think we're not going to see a whole lot out of this complex, but southwestern locations could have some gusty winds, some heavy rainfall later this morning. Let's show you things on an active radar, especially as we look just back to the west here in central portions of Illinois. We got a lot of lightning here, some heavy rainfall, and and that so far is tracking across the central portion of Illinois, and it will make its way here into portions of Indiana as the morning goes along. There is a severe thunderstorm watch back to our west. We'll see if that gets extended eastward here as we go through the morning. Just some showers at this point between Terre Haute and Sullivan. But here's a look at Truecast, and you can see that line of thunderstorms impacting areas like Bedford and Seymour as we go through mid to late morning hours here. But it moves pretty quickly as we start to decrease those clouds heading into the afternoon. Right now, warm and muggy downtown. We've got 77 degrees. It's in the lower 80s, though, in Bloomington, where you could see a few of those thunderstorms later today. As we go into the afternoon, the humidity begins to fall. It's still going to be toasty, though, with a high in the upper 80s. We are following a major traffic issue now, getting some news into the newsroom, of course, that this uh, traffic situation on the city's southeast side is now a fatal crash, and so police are on the scene. So this is I-465 southbound at I-74 East. The section of road closed now for several hours as police continue their investigation. This will be a major traffic headache for those of you, of course, trying to get to the airport this morning. So keep that in mind as you're trying to figure out how to do what you do this morning. Of course, a North Split project compounding this accident this morning. Again, we'll continue to follow this throughout the morning. Our live drive unit, Shay Goodpasture, our photojournalist, is, of course, trying to figure out how to get around this track of traffic mess and to give you really the best viewpoint as you can see at this point he's at I-465 at Washington Street and like many people stuck in traffic it is slow going this morning because this is a major uh, intersection a major artery during the morning commute so we'll continue to follow and give you the very best information of course as the morning progresses here on Good Morning Indiana. So take a live look at your drive time this morning if you're coming in from Greenfield to 465. You're looking at 13 minutes this morning. Uh, if we, let's one more look. If you're coming in from Whitestown to the downtown area, 19 minutes this morning. That's about the average as the commute begins to build at this time of day. That's traffic for now. Now let's check in with Kelsey Anderson. Well, new overnight, Metro Police are investigating a shooting that happened early this morning in the 2300 block of Stewart Street. That's on the city's northeast side and not far from East 25th and North Sherman Drive. Officers were called to a home just before 2 o'clock this morning. When they arrived, they found a man inside the home with gunshot wounds. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, and police are asking anyone with information to give them a call. And the search resumes this morning for a man missing in Lake Monroe near Bloomington. State conservation officers say 64-year-old Dwight Fry went missing in the water around 5.30 on Thursday. A passing boater told DNR officials the Springville man was attempting to help his wife when he went missing. Crews searched for several hours using drones, boats, divers, and sonar equipment. A painful moment for families and friends of two young teenagers in Johnson County. They were pulled from a retention pond in Greenwood and did not survive. The girls were rescued from that pond on Edgewater Drive Wednesday evening. State conservation officers say the juveniles were pulled from about 15 feet of water. The Department of Natural Resources, also known as DNR, says retention ponds are dangerous because it's hard to see the bottom and judge their depth. In Indiana, there are, are not any standards for, or rules when it comes to security or signage around those retention ponds. That's why first responders say if you live near a retention pond, please be on high alert. To educate your kids, educate that that's not the safe place to go swimming. Um, and make sure, if, especially like these houses that border this, you know what, if you can hang a life jacket on your fence post or something, a rope, something on the edges so that so if the kids do get in the water. There's always an ongoing debate on whether we should close these retention ponds in, leave them wide open. Uh, there's arguments on aesthetics in the neighborhood, how a fence looks around everything. Uh, does a fence actually work? Authorities say if you see someone playing in or near a retention pond, to please call 911 it may save their life. 
And this morning, thousands of people in Allen County remain without power following Monday's storms. The storm initially knocked power out to more than 41,000 customers. This morning, Indiana and Michigan Power says about 2,600 people near Fort Wayne are without power. The utility company says strong winds damaged 340 power poles and 60 transformers. The company hasn't given a timetable on when those and those still without power will see their lights back on again. The time now is 6.05. A man will spend more than five decades in prison for his role in an Indianapolis gas station murder. Maurice Lilly is charged in connection to the death of Dustin McClellan on the city's northeast side. A prosecutor said that Lilly approached McClellan saying that he disrespected his wife. Lilly admitted to using a golf club to hit the man several times in the head. And this morning, a state auditor is asking a former Delaware County School bookkeeper Where's the money? Carla Burke worked at the book as the bookkeeper for food services at Anderson Community Schools between 2006 and 2019. During an audit, state officials found checks intended for vendors, but were issued and cashed by Burke. Now the state says Burke needs to pay more than $1.1 million to the taxpayers for unauthorized transactions and penalties. So far, criminal charges have not been filed, and WRTV Investigates is working to get a statement from Carla Burke. Uh, TurboTax users in our state could soon see money from a nationwide settlement. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita says nearly $3 million will be distributed to TurboTax users in our state. The Federal Trade Commission says the company falsely advertised free tax filing services. Mr. Rokita says there were more than 98,000 transactions impacted in Indiana alone. Learn if you qualify for a part of that settlement money by clicking on this story at our website, WRTV.com. And we're working for you this morning with a scam alert. State troopers say they're seeing more incidents involving fraudulent puppy sales. They say buyers make contact with people on social media saying they have puppies for sale. The victim then transfers money to the supposed seller. And when they get the address provided to pick up the pup, they realize it's a scam. State police offer these tips to protect yourself, communicate with the seller, meet the seller and the animal, get a contract and check references. Never wire money or use gift cards for payment. And if the price is too good to be true, it's likely a scam. Transactions made by prepaid card or wire transfers are nearly impossible to recover once sent. Kelsey, great advice on that. In your community right now, a landmark right here in Indianapolis celebrating its 100th anniversary. You see, 95 years ago, the building that would be the legacy of America's first black female millionaire opened its doors on Indiana, Indiana Avenue for the first time. The building housed the beauty empire of Madam C.J. Walker, as well as the historic Walker Theater. Today, it is officially the Madam Walker Legacy Center. It is one of the last remaining structures standing on the avenue that was at the center, really, of black life and culture right here in Indianapolis. Walker was an entrepreneur and she built, of course, her business through beauty products, but also with helping other women to become entrepreneurs. And so the building became a space for black doctors, attorneys, there was a drugstore, there were restaurants. Um, and today we uplift those things. We are now the Madam Walker Legacy Center because we uplift entrepreneurs, we uplift social justice. Kristen does a great job with the center, great leadership there as well. You can celebrate their 95th anniversary at block parties scheduled for tomorrow and Sunday. We have all the details you need inside this story on the WRTV app. And coming up on Good Morning Indiana, Ford is recalling nearly 3 million vehicles. The reason behind the massive recall and how it can impact the car you drive. Batter up, they're headed to Nationals coming up in Good News Friday. The local beep ball team and their huge accomplishment. But first, your local forecast on this Friday. Kyle, good morning. And good morning, Raphael. Yes, it is a storm team alert day as we are watching some thunderstorms back in portions of Illinois as we track the bulk of those moving toward the state line approaching Terre Haute and Sullivan. A little closer to 8 o'clock this morning. We'll track those through the state and talk about the big time change for the weekend. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. It is 6.09 here on your Friday. Good morning to Fishers, Bloomington and Kokomo, the time now 612. These are your top stories developing right now. We should learn if Ukraine is a step closer to joining the European Union. The European Commission, which is the executive arm of the EU, will give its opinion on Ukraine's application to join. 
An opinion in favor of Ukraine joining the EU is just the next step in a process that could take years to complete. Today, the stock market will try to finish a bad week, hopefully on a positive note. Heading into today, the Dow Jones is down nearly 5% this week. The tech-heavy Nasdaq is down more than 6%. The sell-off is being blamed on several economic reports falling short of expectations and, of course, the Fed raising those interest rates. And today marks the 50th anniversary of the Watergate break-in. Police arrested five men for burglarizing the Democratic National Headquarters at the Watergate Hotel. The investigation led to dozens of indictments and 48 convictions. The attempt to cover up the crime eventually led to the resignation of President Nixon back in 1974. Raphael, new details revealed during the 3rd January 6th public hearings. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, the committee using testimony of former White House advisors and video from the Capitol attack to try to link Trump to the violence that unfolded that day, including the threats on former Vice President Mike Pence's life. The January 6th committee's third public hearing reconstructed in great detail the immense pressure campaign former President Donald Trump waged on his own vice president in private and in public to name him the winner of the 2020 election he lost. Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. Former White House aides and Mike Pence's legal counsel testifying. The pressure only grew intense as Pence rebuffed the efforts, telling Trump the vice president does not have the power to overturn a presidential election. But on the morning of January 6, Trump calling Pence from the Oval Office. The conversation was was pretty heated. I remember hearing the word wimp. According to the committee, even though conservative attorney John Eastman was among multiple advisors and White House lawyers who told Trump the plan to overturn the election result was illegal, Eastman still aggressively pushed the scheme, later asking for a presidential pardon unsuccessfully. Trump, meanwhile, stoking his supporters by repeatedly attacking Mike Pence at the January 6th rally and again with this tweet saying Pence lacked courage. This as the angry mob stormed the Capitol. Trump's own aides shocked. I felt like he was pouring gasoline on the fire by tweeting that. These images showing Pence and his family hiding, then moving to an underground parking garage when the angry mob came within 40 feet of the vice president. Pence eventually certifying the election result for Biden after consulting with widely respected conservative judge Michael Ludig. That declaration of Donald Trump as the next president would have plunged America into what I believe would have been tantamount to a revolution. And as the committee plans its next hearing on Tuesday, they want to hear from Ginny Thomas, a strong Trump backer and wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. There are questions about her role in the effort to overturn the election. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. We're working for you with a recall alert this morning. Ford is recalling 2.9 million cars and SUVs that could roll away even when placed in park. The vehicles are the 2013 to 2019 Escape, the 2013 to 2018 C-Max, 2013 to 2016 Fusion, and 2013 to 21 Transit Connect. Ford officials say the transmission on the affected vehicles may not really be in the park position despite you putting it in park. The safety regulator says it received six reports of property damage and four reports of personal injuries potentially related to the problem but no deaths. The time now is 616. It's getting harder to afford, afford to finance a home. Mortgage rates increased by more than a half a percentage point this week alone. Uh, Freddie Mac says that's the largest one-week jump since 1987. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 5.78% in the week ending June the 16th. Now that's up from 5.23% the week before. Rates were an average of 2.93% this time last year. And this morning, as summer travelers take to the skies, delays and cancellations are on the rise. Airlines grounded 1,600 flights on Thursday alone as storms swept through some of the nation's busiest airports. Experts say a rising number of flight cancellations are the result of airlines struggling with pilot shortages. Unions have repeatedly complained there's not enough staff to follow through on the flights that are booked. Some lawmakers are calling for new rules that would hold airlines accountable for widespread delays or cancellations. 
Indians. So here's a look at how cancellations and delays are already impacting the Indianapolis International Airport this morning. Right now, 10 flights leaving Indianapolis are canceled. Six flights headed to the Circle City are canceled. A majority of the canceled flights are Republic and Delta flights. Six flights are delayed. You want to check with your airline before heading to the airport this morning. And Kyle, I don't know if I'm going to want to get out of town. I feel like we're going to have great weather this weekend. No yeah. need to fly anywhere. It's going to come right to us here for Saturday and Sunday. So make those weekend plans. But yeah, you know, today we do have a few thunderstorms. I don't think it's really going to impact the airport too much here as these are mainly going to stay south and west of Indy. But we've got that marginal risk in those locations that we could have some isolated strong to severe storms as we go through the morning. The primary threat going to be some gusty wind but also some very heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning with these storms as well. You can see quite the light show around Effingham, Illinois this morning, and there it is continuing to dive toward the south and east. So let's give you an idea of where this thing is headed. As we get to 9 o'clock this morning, you can see the complex knocking on the door here of southwestern portions of Indiana. Bedford Seymour as we go mid to late morning dealing with those thunderstorms, but areas north of Bloomington likely to not see much in the way of any rainfall today and in fact as we go into the afternoon our clouds will begin to thin out a little bit. So all these storms are associated with a frontal system that's going to sweep through and bring those very nice changes for the weekend. Right now it's 70 degrees in Chicago. It's 77 in downtown. As we plan out our forecast here through the morning we're at 80 degrees at 10 a.m. So it's still going to be a warm day for us. 84 at noon and as we head into the afternoon we'll get those numbers upper 80s close to 90 here and Again, tons of sunshine. Your high 88 in Bloomington and Indianapolis, about 90 for the top number in Columbus and Lafayette at 88. But I want to show you this. The humidity that begins to fall as we head through the afternoon. So the heat index values, which the last couple of days have been around 100 degrees, are going to be into the 80s here, even as we head through the afternoon and this evening. Our weekend planning forecast cannot beat this weather. We've got 80 degrees and sunshine for your Saturday. Low humidity there. Pretty much the same thing on Sunday. Sunday, just a few degrees warmer, seasonable at 83. Our Saturday hour by hour forecast features all that sunshine temperatures. It'll be around 70 degrees here midday. We'll get upper 70s to around 80 for the afternoon temperature. And then Sunday for your Father's Day plans, take dad outside here, enjoy some activities. We've got temperatures that'll be 62 at 9 a.m. Light southeast wind as we go through the day, but the humidity remains low, 83 for the top number there. Put it all together now in your extended weather forecast. The overnights are going to be pretty comfortable as well. 61 there Saturday morning, 56 Sunday. Oh, enjoy it because look at next week. It's going to have a very familiar feel to what we've just come out of here with highs back in the 90s, the humidity returning and just a small chance for a shower or storm. We'll need a plan ahead this morning as we take a live look. We have some breaking details, of course, involving this situation. This on the city's southeast side, our in-dot camera, really has been focused for the last hour or so at I-465 southbound at I-74. A fatal crash right there. The, this part of the interstate system shut down. Traffic now moving anywhere. Of course, this is a critical point of our, of our commute this morning and of our interstate system, so you'll need to find a different way around this intersection, making matters worse, of course, the North Loop project, which is really forcing everyone to get on 465. So keep that in mind this morning. If this is the way you get to the airport or get to work this morning, major issues here. This may be shut down for another 90 minutes or so. We'll keep on top of this developing story. Our live drive unit right now approaching this area. This is I-465 uh, on Brookville Road. You can see traffic is moving rather slowly. At least it's moving, but keep in mind that those of you trying to get to the airport, trying to get, catch that flight or trying to get to work or run that errand, be mindful this morning that because of that fatal crash there on 465 uh, southbound near Beach Grove that you will be running into some parking lot kind of traffic where traffic will be stop and go throughout the morning. Again, I'll keep monitoring this throughout the next 30 minutes right here on Good Morning Indiana. Well, it's been a good week for me at least here with you, Raphael, on Good Morning Indiana, and I'd like to top it off a little positivity this so morning. So before I go on with the prompter, and I don't want to go over time, working <laughs> with you this week has been utterly fantastic. Thank so for you. me, this has been a great week, and then we top it off on a Good News Friday. There we go. Back to the prompter. You are in luck. It is Good News Friday, and we begin with some amazing athletes. You have to meet these guys. They're amazing. They're visually impaired, and they play some great baseball through a program known as Beep Ball. You see, the ball, which makes a beeping sound, lets the batter know when to hit the ball. I've watched these guys at work. 
Wow, just wow. So the RHI Indy Edge is heading to Beaumont, Texas as the top seed and the favorite. Come on, you could do it to win it all. The series runs from July the 25th through the 31st. I will be following them and bring you any pictures that they send. Good luck, team. Well, we know it's been a hot, hot week in central Indiana, no matter where you work, but the heat was not a match for an IMPD officer dedicated to serving the community. The officer came across a family stranded with a blown out tire and without a spare tire or a jack. Once realizing her task, she borrowed a jack and tools from a local Firestone shop. The shop's manager and officer then worked out a deal to get the family a tire and get them back on the road. Do you know this happens so much, but police officers refuse to talk about it? Exactly. Because they're humble, but that's great work there. I want to meet these three young men. Let me take you to Howard County, Kokomo. These guys are being credited for alerting a family to a house fire. Guys, good job. Alex Lindley, Max Campbell, and Julian Lindley were walking home when they noticed that fire. Firefighters say the young men attempted to alert those inside by banging on that front door. When no one answered, they went to a bedroom window. Of course, the dad in the home was able to hear the boys and was able to get out safely. That's what I'm talking about. We want to meet these guys. Oh, yes. Good News Friday. Great story. These are hometown heroes. I'm John Matteris. We're being bombarded by calls and tech scams about our bank account, about online orders we didn't make, new technology to stop those scams. Coming up. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Father's Day is on Sunday, so if you haven't bought something to spoil your dad quite yet, you still have some time. I can't wait for you to give me that gift. And grandma's cookies <laughs> coming your way. And this morning Come we're recognizing kitchen. all dads. <laughs> we want to give them a shout out to the special men who live in our hearts every single day. So my kid's grandfather, Noel Baker, was a great guy who loved us. And we remember him all the time. As you can see, there's Sierra and Antonio with Grandpa. You could also see Lauren Casey and her dad, Sean. And of course, our good friend, Megan Shin and her dad, Alan. And here's me with my dad, Tim, and some of the many memories that we share. And also you see Todd with his mom and dad there. And Todd, we hope you're enjoying your time with your yes. family. And a happy Father's Day to my dad, Neil. He's had his hands full for quite some time with yes, five kids. Yes, he does. Kids. Her name is Kelsey uh, Anderson. And <laughs> you would agree with that, and 11 grandchildren. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what the heck are you bums doing here? And while I'm sure he likes being a dad, I think his favorite title is Pops. That was a video of his two youngest grandkids surprising him all the way oh, from Utah. That's awesome. And here's a video of his other grandkids who all decided to dress up as a different version of Pops for Halloween <laughs> in 2020. Happy Father's Day to this weekend to all the dads of our GMI team and, of course, all of you at home. If Pops likes shiny jackets, I have one that I could wear next Father's Day in honor of Pops. Perfect, he Let does. <laughs> He'll raid your closet. I'm Not sure. as blingy as you. Yeah. It is a storm team alert day. How's it looking out there? Uh, you know, things are calm right now across central Indiana this morning, but as we go a little deeper into the morning hours, you can see this complex of thunderstorms making its way across Illinois. Could have some strong gusty winds, and this is mainly going to impact areas southwest of Indianapolis here as we go through the morning. So we're going to continue to keep tabs on that for you. If you do need to get out there and get some of that yard work done this weekend, looking fantastic for that. A drop in the humidity and very comfortable. Out there right now, you can see the haze is still with us in downtown Indianapolis. A temperature of 77, 72 for you in Kokomo and Bloomington at 81. On our way to highs close to 90 this afternoon. All right, Kyle. Well, no matter how many numbers you block, it feels as if there's no end to spam calls and text messages. I'm probably getting one as we speak. This is so frustrating. This morning, John Mattery shows us the steps that cell carriers are now taking to warn you what a potential scammer is either trying to call or even text. Hannah Brockwell says she can't even enjoy lunch with her husband without getting a suspicious phone call or text to her phone. It prompts you to click on the link and it, it'll claim to take you to this very urgent matter. She says if it's not a banking scam, it's a package delivery scam. Oh, this package is on its way yeah. from UPS. Click on the link to track it. And these scams are much more than just a minor inconvenience. For instance, if you get a text message claiming there's a problem with your bank account and you click on it and fall for it, a scammer can drain that account in a matter of minutes. Unfortunately, all this technology was designed at a time when there were no concerns about this kind of thing. 
Cybersecurity consultant Dave Hatter says spoof calls are especially dangerous. You look down, it looks like a local number, might look like it's from your bank or the IRS, could be anything, because this is unfortunately really easy to do. There is some good news, though. Cell phone carriers are taking steps to warn consumers that an incoming call is likely a scam. To me, that's just a extremely invaluable service because it is so easy to spoof this crap. So what else is being done to protect you? Just last month, the FCC announced a crackdown on overseas robocalls. Plus, all major carriers now offer some sort of call blocking app, though not all services are free. No matter what technology exists, Hatter says, don't answer calls from unknown numbers. Never give out personal information like your bank account number. And if someone says they represent your bank or a government agency, hang up and verify the number. Hannah just wants it to end. It's just really confusing and irritating and I just wonder how how they got my number. That way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Right now on Good Morning Indiana. Here's a look at your Friday news feed. Metro Police investigating a deadly shooting overnight. This happened in the 2300 block of Stewart Street just before 2 this morning. Medics rushed the male victim to the hospital, we're told, in critical condition. Police are asking anyone with information on this developing story to please give them a call. And the search will resume this morning for a man missing in Lake Monroe near Bloomington. State conservation officers say 64-year-old Dwight Fry went missing in the water around 5.30 on Thursday. A passing boater told DNR officials the Springville man was attempting to help his wife when he went missing. This morning, a late night game ending with celebrations for the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors clinched the championship by beating the Celtics 103-90 in Game 6. The win is the Warriors' seventh championship title in their history. So da 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 <laughs> That is your ESPN Light Report here on Good Morning Indiana. It is also a Storm Team Alert Day. Welcome to us. Welcome to Studio A. I'm Rafael Sanchez. And I'm Kelsey Anderson. And Todd, or excuse me, Kyle Mounts, you're in Can the house Can I just say today. something? <laughs> Listen, we have business to take care of. You just made Rafael the happiest guy. I did. <laughs> I always confuse the people because I say one name that the fact that she did it, Happy Father's Day to me. <laughs> Kyle, good morning to you. What's the outlook we on this We still got Friday? a half hour off here, yeah, so <laughs> let's not count those chickens you just You said yet. a few more weather tosses. <laughs> All right, let's talk about temperatures this morning, and then we're going to be tracking some thunderstorms along with it. Right now, it's 77 degrees in Indianapolis. Feels just a degree warmer, but we make our way into Bloomington. The heat index for you this morning is 86, and it feels like 85 in Terre Haute. Here's why we've got that storm team alert day for you this morning. Complex of thunderstorms, lots of lightning, some gusty wind potential with these as they approach the state. Right now, just a few rain showers into Sullivan. But as we track this line, here you can see as we approach 9 a.m., there it is, making its way towards Sullivan into portions of Greene County, mainly staying south and west of Indianapolis by 1030 this morning around Bloomington into Bedford and Seymour there. Things should begin to improve as we approach noon today and temperatures later on this afternoon still around 90 degrees. I will. Okay. Now time to check your traffic this morning. We're keeping a close eye on this, uh, of course, this uh, developing story here on the city southeast side. I-465 at I-74 shut down because of a fatal crash. We'll continue to monitor this, but this is causing some major backups, as you will now see from our live drive unit, who is sort of in the area, of course, there on the city south side. You can see all the traffic now. It's taking me. It is stop and go. So we'll keep it. Keep that in mind that we're monitoring the situation. If you can find an alternate route because of the shutdown at I-465 at Beach Grove, do so. This this morning. Otherwise, you will be in stop and go traffic. Kelsey? Well, this morning, hundreds of Hoosiers are desperately waiting for the gift of life. WRTV Adam Shumes is live this morning with a mom's message about her daughter and the lives she saved. Adam, good morning. Kelsey Roth, good morning. Denise Gatling tells me that her daughter was a kind, carefree woman, a mother, and a joy to be around. She also tells me that she doesn't want her daughter's name to ever be forgotten. So this morning, she has the pictures and the words behind her daughter's story. So they recorded her heartbeat before she passed. You squeeze it, and that's her heartbeat. Kiana Burns was a 28-year-old mother of four, and her mom, Denise Gatling's best friend. She was my baby. I talked to her multiple times every single day. She called me every morning between 6 and 6.15. Kiana's life was tragically cut short more than a week ago. 
after she was involved in a chain reaction car crash last Thursday at 52nd Street and Keystone Avenue. The pictures show the aftermath of the crash. The fact that I know that everybody else in that crash is alive and the five people that she saved through organ donation just makes me, it makes it a little bit easier. Denise made the choice to donate Kiana's organs. Her life will now save five others. My daughter saved people's lives that she doesn't even know that she saved. There's currently over 106,000 people waiting nationwide for a life-saving organ transplant and over 1,000 people in Indiana. The president and CEO of the Indiana Donor Network says that the network in May transplanted more organs than they had in any other month. So being able to help one more person, um, it's, it really is just a great feeling to be able to work for an organization that has such a great cause. Organizations just like the Indiana Donor Network that provides heartbeat bears to families in need. I sleep with her heartbeat bear every night, and just like her kids do. That was photojournalist Jason Strong behind the lens. Denise tells me that she hopes to eventually meet the five people that her daughter helped save. If you are interested in learning how to become an organ donor, we have more details for you on our website, WRTV.com. But for now, we're live in downtown Indianapolis on this Friday morning for Good Morning Indiana. I'm Adam Shumes, WRTV. At 636, an Indianapolis hotel owner apparently shut off at the water and electricity to force long-term residents to move. This happened at the Oyo Hotel on the city's southwest side, one of the hottest days of the year when this went down. People living there telling WRTV they were not given any notice. Kids, elderly, we got sick people here, yes. And this is the cheapest place they can find. Nobody has nowhere to go. When we told him, what about the kids? I can't even say what he said, but basically, forget the kids, but a different word. After the residents called police, the city stepped in. An Indigo bus was brought in to provide a cool place for them to sit. Food was also made available as the situation was being sorted out. As of now, the power and water back on. Get this, under Indiana law, people in month-to-month -month contracts must be given 30 days notice to move. WRTV did reach out to the old and new property owners about the situation. At this hour, we're still waiting for your response. And we're learning more about the Walmart Distribution Center in Hendricks County back in March. An 800 page report from the EPA details air and debris samples taken in the days after the fire. The EPA summary says chemicals like ethanol and benzene were found in the air. However, not enough to result in adverse health effects. And the EPA officials say no asbestos was found in the samples collected near the fire. Uh, gas prices may be on the way down, but the crooks, listen, they're trying to get your money and scam you out of your dollars. What you need to know coming up right here on Good Morning Indiana. A consumer alert WRTV investigates has learned that scammers are sending out text messages falsely claiming that you can win or earn free gasoline. Some may entice you with a link to click on and of course win what they say is a $500 gift card. We shared these messages with the Better Business Bureau and they tell us if this is a form of phishing. So what happens when I click on this? Potentially malware could be installed on your device, so it would allow the scammer to have access to that device. Or it could send you to a link with a, like to a copycat website, and you could actually fill out your information and actually input all of your information, so now the scammer has access to that. The BBB says the texts are so new they haven't received any complaints just yet, but they expect to do so, of course, as the gas prices continue to remain high. Here's the best way to stop phishing texts. Do not click the links or engage with the scammers. When in doubt, delete the message. Contact your wireless provider and ask them for help in stopping unwanted messages and calls and purchase an app like RoboKiller, for example, and protect your mobile phone by setting up software to update automatically. And hey, listen, the QR code, this is so helpful. Scan it to find the cheapest gases right here in central Indiana. This morning, Indiana's average stands at $5 a gallon. The Murphy USA gas station on Pendleton Pike selling their gas at $4.97 a gallon. Meanwhile, if you head to the Circle K on Emerson Avenue, you can find gas there for $4.99 a gallon. A major recall impacting medicine bottles that are missing a key safety feature. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is recalling more than
than 400,000 medication bottles from Kroger and Walgreens. The bottles contain common pain relievers like ibuprofen and aspirin. There's nothing wrong with the medication, but the bottles don't meet standards for child resistance. All the bottles are branded either Walgreens or Kroger. The specific bottles covered under the recall are listed on the CPSC's website. It's WRTV Storm Team Alert Day. We've got Kyle Mounts standing by with your forecast for the day. Kyle Mounts, I did it. Yeah, and Kelsey, <laughs> uh, we are watching that line of thunderstorms for us this morning. You can see a lot of lightning around Effingham, and that stretches back to the northwest. So these are going to be diving mainly south and west of Indianapolis for us as we go through the morning. So areas like Bedford, be prepared for some thunderstorms, some heavy rainfall. Your temperatures generally in the 70s this morning. It is 643 here on your final a Friday. We will be right back here on Good Morning Indiana. Raphael, this weekend, people across our country will celebrate Juneteenth. It's a good thing to celebrate. Places like Martin University want to be at the center, really, of educating people about this historic day. The university hosted a Juneteenth celebration on Thursday night. Let's take you to that. Juneteenth, of course, overall commemorates June 19th, 1865. It's the day when slavery officially ended in all southern states. Organizers at the event last night told WRTV that Juneteenth is really something that all Americans should embrace. Juneteenth, like many black institutions, is about education, it's about truth, and it's about knowledge and power. And so it's important for Martin as Indiana's only predominantly black institution of higher education to ensure that we're continuing to feed and support those important concepts. And so celebrating Juneteenth is truly a celebration of freedom, a celebration of expression, but it's a celebration of knowledge and education and power and truth. And so we believe that it's strongly and urgently important for institutions like Martin University and others in our community to continue to rely on those facts and build a brighter future for all people. The evening of celebration included giveaways, music, guest speakers, and ethnic cuisines. Martin University, by the way, was founded in 1977. And get this, it is Indiana's only predominantly black institution of higher education. And by the way, there's so many other events to celebrate the Juneteenth holiday taking place right here in Indianapolis this weekend. And the forecast is going to be great. Todd will be here. I'll be Todd. Kyle, see, I did it already. Just head to WRTV.com to find out more. What a I beautiful told scene. I, listen, I just did that because I knew you were coming up just to give you a hard time. But can I also say, by the way, happy anniversary to Mrs. Sanchez, 29 years on Sunday. Wow. How about that? Congratulations to Thank both you. of you. Thank yeah. You. Look at that sunshine right. behind you. Get yeah. out of the way. There we go. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just do it. We'll just stare at this for a little while. How's that? Um, yeah, we've been talking about the stormy conditions, and earlier we were talking about the beautiful downtown Indianapolis with those city lights. Well, check this out. In Greencastle, DePaul University is showing off this morning with that very nice sunrise here and just a few clouds that are kind of obscuring it. Right now we got 77 in Indianapolis. The temperature has dropped into the upper 60s for you in Lafayette, 77 right now in Shelbyville. Here's a look at radar, and it is very active just off to our west around Effingham, Illinois. You can see lots of lightning with these thunderstorms. And now we've got a watch that comes just up to the state line here. We'll be watching these, but again, they're mainly going to be diving across the southwestern third of central Indiana here as we go through the morning hours. So let's take you to TrueCast, kind of plan things out here. 9.30 this morning, there's that line of thunderstorms storms, maybe a couple of isolated storms out ahead of it. As we approach the mid to late morning hours around Bedford and Seymour dealing with some thunderstorms. So we may see these mainly near and south of a Bloomington to Columbus line and the rest of us going to actually start to see our clouds decreasing as we head through the day here. So that's going to lead us to a lot of sunshine this afternoon. It is still a very warm day out there as numbers will be around 80 here at 10 a.m. Middle ladies for your lunch hour and we will be approaching 90 for the afternoon afternoon high. It's not going to feel as hot though as the last couple of days as we are going to notice the humidity beginning to drop. That's what comes in behind that complex of thunderstorms this morning. 88 this afternoon though for you in Lafayette, 86 in Frankfurt, 87 your top number in Anderson, and then we'll get the upper 80s to around 90 degrees here near I-70. 90 for you in Brazil, 89 Rockville, and 91 in Shelbyville. We'll find a temperature topping out at 90 in Columbus and 89 in Bedford. No record today. That 95 set back in that very hot year of 1913. And there you can see the average high is 83. As we look at the muggy meter, it comes down today. It is going to stay low 
right through the upcoming weekend. So we will enjoy lots of sunshine for our Saturday. Temperatures that make their way into the upper 70s to around 80. So actually a little refreshing change of pace after what we've had here lately and Sunday. More sunshine, low humidity, a high in the lower 80s. We've got the temperatures in the low 80s this weekend, but the 90s, they don't stay away very long. They are back here for most of next week and mainly dry to go along with it. Uh, Kyle, we continue to follow you know, a serious situation on the city's southeast side. You normally don't see this image, but as we can see, finally, some progress here on the city's southeast side. It appears that 465 southbound has been reopened to some traffic. In fact, this is the first time we're seeing vehicles actually on the stretch of interstate for the past 90 minutes or so. And that's because about 90 minutes ago, a state police investigating a fatal crash here in this section of the road. It had been closed for those 90 minutes. Major backup because of that fatality that happened there. We'll get more details on that hopefully throughout the day as to what exactly happened with the fatality. But as you can see, again, good news. And as you can see that that part of the interstate is open. I had our live drive now at 465 at I-74 from Washington Street. As you can see, it's taken Shea Goodpasture, our photographer, 55 minutes to get to this location because of what happened there on the southeast side. So keep that in mind that as we now are seeing, of course, the traffic is reopened. It's going to take some time, but it's going to go slow going uh, because of what happened. We'll keep monitoring the situation, of course, throughout Good Morning America. Well, he's the king of rock and roll, and a new movie will tell his life story when it debuts next week. Coming up on GMA, Priscilla Presley and Olivia DeJong talk about how it felt watching their story on the big screen. But Kelsey First Hoosiers, who, who used TurboTax, could be getting some extra cash. The details on a new settlement still ahead, plus a look at the rest of today's top stories. From Indie Streaming News Leader, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Well, it's 6.54 on Good Morning Indiana, and before you head out the door, here are your top stories this a, Friday. A deadly crash of the city's southeast side was causing some major problems for drivers. Finally, just reopened a few moments ago. The collision happened around 4 this morning on I-465 southbound near I-74. These were images from earlier this morning. It is not clear what happened in the moments before that crash. We'll have much more on this developing story coming up today on the News at Noon. Metro Police are investigating a deadly overnight shooting. It happened in the 20 300 block of Stewart Street just before 2 o'clock this morning. Medics rushed the male victim to the hospital where he later died. Police are asking anyone with information to call them. The shooting on Stewart follows a Thursday night shooting on the city's east side. Metro police responded to a report of a person shot. This in the 8800 block of East 21st Street Thursday night. They found one victim in critical condition. No information yet on a suspect or even a possible motive. The search will resume this morning for a man missing in Lake Monroe near Bloomington. State conservation officers say 64-year-old Dwight Fry went missing in the water around 5.30 on Thursday night. A passing boater told DNR officials the Springville man was attempting to help his wife when he went missing. The TurboTax users in our state could soon see money from a nationwide settlement. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita says nearly $3 million will be distributed to TurboTax users in Indiana. The Federal Trade Commission says the company falsely advertised free tax filing services. Services. To learn if you qualify for a part of the settlement, you can go to this story right now at our website, WRTV.com. An 800-page report from the EPA details air and debris samples taken in the days after the Walmart fire in Hendricks County. The EPA's summary says chemicals like ethanol and benzene were not found in the air. However, were found in the air, excuse me, however, not enough to have adverse health effects. And the EPA officials say no asbestos was found in samples collected near the fire. Now today, U.S. Airlines will try to get back on schedule after more than 1,500 flight cancellations. Uh, carriers blame staff shortages and bad weather for the cancellations. The canceled flights happened the same day that Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg called on airline CEOs to lay out their plan to operate smoothly the rest of the summer. Here's a live look, of course, for more information about how cancellations and delays are already impacting the Indianapolis International Airport this morning. Right now, 10 flights leaving Indianapolis canceled. Six flights headed to the Circle City are canceled. The majority of the canceled flights are Republic and American Airlines flights. You want to check with your airline before heading out to the city's west side, of course, to see what's happening there at the airport. A storm team alert day, a hot one. 
but a great Father's Day weekend. I'm loving it. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, today is kind of our transition weather day across central Indiana. That does mean we've got some thunderstorms for some communities this morning, and you can see that's mainly going to be southwest of Indianapolis, but we've got that line of thunderstorms that's approaching the state line here, going to have a lot of lightning, some gusty winds, possibly some hail as well. So we are likely to see a thunderstorm watch issued for portions of the state here as we go through the morning. We'll keep you updated on that. Of course, you can always stay updated as you're on the go with the Storm Shield app there. That'll send any alerts right to your phone. Today, for most areas, we are going to see quite a bit of sunshine, especially as we head into the afternoon and those temperatures into the upper 70s. That is for tomorrow. So that is what's to come after today's high around 90. Looking forward to that weekend forecast. We'll be here and on WRTV.com whenever news breaks. Thanks for joining us.